and we are being recorded. Thank you everybody for joining us for the second social distancing Zoom Lunch to Learn. Uh, and a very big and a special thank you to David Robbins for sponsoring uh, today's Lunch to Learn. Uh, he's sponsoring in honor of his wife, Kim, and uh, it's a great honor and uh, really thank you so much, David. David's been a long-standing sponsor from the first year. So we uh, really, really appreciate you continuing to, uh, to be a sponsor of our Lunch and Learn. And a big thank you to the JCA, our partners in crime. Right? We are uh, excited to be doing these Lunch and Learns now in the JCA, using their location with uh, plenty of space to uh, social distance. Uh, God willing, soon this won't be too big of a norm and we will get back to Lunch and learns without masks, lunch and learns where we're closer together, uh, and getting back out to other people's offices. Nothing against the JCA, we love you guys, right? But, uh, you know, we want to get back into other people's offices and, and get out there. So, let's get cracking. Today's topic is a very, very important topic. And now, the topic is how to, how to deal, how to react in uncertain times. How do we, there's so many things and so many times that there's, we have uncertainty in our lives. I gotta mention it. I'm sure a lot of people are in a very uncertain state of their lives right now, right? Whatever camp you're on, I don't care. This is not a political lunch to learn. We never talk about politics. But whatever camp you're on, or even if you're not in any camp, right? I'll tell you a cute story. My nephew in England, right? Uh, my sister lives in England, and my nephew in England, he uh, sent, uh, we have a group WhatsApp. Uh, it's very cool, uh, a nice family group, what's up? And he sent uh, a message and he was like, okay, so who's really winning and how do you win and what does it mean and what happens if I have a decision and this and that. And he was just very intellectual. He was curious about the system and how our American government works and the whole world. Because let's face it, America, right? The country that we live in, right, is one of the powers of the world. And it really makes an impact into the whole world whatever the outcome is, it makes an impact everywhere. So there's a lot of people that are in uncertain times and it doesn't make a difference what you hold. I love you all, right? But we are still in an uncertain time. And then a person has uncertainty in their own lives, right? If it's a relationship, if it's a financial crisis, if it's what to do next, if it's what college to go to, right? Um, as some of you know, my daughter, about seven, she'll probably shoot me if she hears that I'm talking about her, right? Because my kids don't like when they, I talk about them. Too bad. That's what they're there for, right? So uh, my daughter, about seven, next year, God willing, is going into high school. And, you know, we're in an uncertain certainty of what to do uh, because we love Jacksonville, but there's no Jewish high school in Jacksonville. And we want to send her somewhere. So what school do we send her to? We send her to that school, send her to this school, right? Uh, so there's an uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainties in people. I remember, what camp should I go to? Now it seems so trivial, but what camp should I go to? Should I go to that camp, should I go to this camp? There's a lot of things in our lives that are uncertain. How do we deal with uncertainty in our lives from a small little one to a big global one? And for every person, uncertainty is different. So that's what today's topic is. And I wanna to start today's topic right, with a very famous quote from Mark Twain. And I've said this quote before, but it's a very important quote and something to remember. Mark Twain, everybody has a source sheet. Sorry guys online, I, I said next time I'll upload it um, and I will let you guys print it out. I apologize about that, I should have thought about that. Right, Mark Twain says, when I was a boy of 14, my father seemed ignorant. I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. There are topics in life, there are situations in life that when we're younger or even when sometimes when we're older, we have a certain view, we think a certain way. And when we have an opportunity to see another view, we have an opportunity to mature a little bit. It's important to recognize that there's other views out there, there's different ways of looking at things. And I'm starting off the lunch to learn with this Mark Twain because it's always, it's very important to be open-minded, right? Now, open-minded means to say that you're open to different ideas. Doesn't mean to say you have to accept them. 
Open-minded means to say that you're open to hear and to digest and to reflect on the different ideas. And I think this Mark Twain really hits it home that, let's be honest, we all had this in our lives. When we were teenagers, what do you know, right? And like, he's like, really, daddy? Like, really, you know what you're talking about? No, they don't say it that way, but you know, but it, it happens. And therefore, let's look at some of the things that the Torah teaches us um, about different ideas and there's many different sources but I'm homing in on a certain direction and hopefully it'll give us the guidelines, it'll give us the, 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 the tools of how to deal with uncertainty in our lives, whatever way it's thrown at us. So the first source I wanna start off with is the source from Genesis. And the source goes like this. In the beginning, when God began to create heaven and earth, the earth was unformed and the void with darkness all over the surface. Right? And God swept over the waters. So now imagine the situation. What does it mean there was darkness all over the surface? The image is one of this, the spear making you shiver, feel cold, dark, lonely. Right? It, it's an it's a, it's a image of, think about the worst situation one has ever been in. And that's darkness. Darkness represents loneliness. Darkness, darkness represents uh, fear. Darkness represents chaos. Darkness represents everything that is difficult in our lives. That's what it means over here. So when God was saying there was darkness all over the surface, it's representing, it's talking about the darkness in our lives. Darkness in our lives. And we all have had those darknesses in our lives. We all have had difficulties in our lives. Be it if it's Unfortunately, a terrorist attack that happened. I, I was in New York City during 9-11, and it was, there was darkness in the streets. There was literally darkness. People were people didn't know what to do. There, there was the, the city that never sleeps actually slept, right? Not physically because everybody was nervous. So there's many situations that we have darkness in our lives. So what did God do to get rid of the darkness? What did God do to take care of the chaos in our lives? It says, and God said, And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The commentaries all ask, one second, right? There was darkness everywhere. And what did God say? There'll be light. Now, what kind of light are we talking about? So you say, what do you mean what kind of light? The sun, right? The fluorescent bulbs, LED, right? I don't think they had an LED yet. Right, but what kind of light was it talking about? <laughs> so the commentaries ask, the sun was not created for another 13 sentences. So God didn't create the sun or the moon yet. And, but he said, let there be light. So, so, you know, the Torah is God's work and it has to make sense. Right, there's questions and answers, we have to understand it. But it, it makes sense. So it says, let there be light, but there's no instrument yet for there to be light. So what kind of light is it talking about? There's no instruments yet to create light, but the sun wasn't created yet. Exxon Fe, that's exactly the question. No, 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 it's good, right? Fe is saying the sun, but the sun wasn't created yet, what? Okay, what does that mean, Exxon, what does that mean? Spiritual, internal, Excellent. That's exactly where we're going to take that direction. Very good. All right. So the commentaries say, what does it mean that there's to be light? Right? Light is not referring to a physical light because there hasn't been yet a physical light. There was no sun. Light, says the commentaries, what it's referring to is the internal light, the, the light of comfort, the light of a spiritual light. And, and, and it's, it's explained very well by this. Darkness is disconnecting the void of elements in the world. When you have darkness, you can't see someone else. When you have darkness, we can't, we, we can't connect. I happen not to be in America during the, the, the blackout of 2004. Anybody remember the blackout of 2004? Very good. You're, you're up, probably upstate then, right? New York, right. So you guys down here in Florida, right, didn't really know about the blackout of 2004. Right? But up north, the whole, you could Google it, the whole East Coast up north was in a blackout. I happened to be in Israel, so I didn't know about it either, but I knew about it because my parents were in a blackout. They lived in Toronto, 
the blackout extended from Toronto, right, to Michigan, right, to New York State, to New Jersey. It was all over. Blackout of 2004, Google it, right? Crazy blackout. What happened during that blackout? People couldn't connect. You can't, when it's dark outside, you can't connect. You, you can't, we have had blackouts here, right? Uh, when hurricane, when it, it's not light outside, it's hard You bump in until you light your candle or you put on your generator, or whatever it is. But blackouts, when it's dark, you can't connect with anybody else. So darkness represents the lack of connection. That's what darkness represents. Light on the other hand, allows one to see the entire world in which he stands. It allows him to see the people who are close to him and the environment they share, in which they compare and create shared life. Light represents the ability to connect with other people. Light represents the ability to see the full picture. There's a fascinating thing. If you have a room, uh, if you have a, a, a lit room, right, and you close one of the shutters and you create a little darkness, there's still light in the room. Right? But if you have a dark room, a room with no light, or outside, and you take just a match and you, you turn on the light, that creates a glow of light. A little match, a little light, the more light you have, the more you can see. But a one match, one tiny little thing of light allows you to eliminate around yourself. It cuts the darkness. It gets rid of the darkness. So darkness represents a void. Darkness represents hardship. Darkness represents the, the idea of, of not being able to connect with other people. It reminds me when I was in high school, many moons ago, not that long ago, but when I was in high school, right? Uh, it was, I think it was the 97, right? Um, I'm dating myself, right? Uh, so 96 and 97, I remember my teacher was very into poems. Right? My English teacher was very into poems and I like poems. I like poems because I, like cre I have a creative mind. And we, uh, we, we, a lot of times my teacher would give a poem and he would like us to analyze a poem, right? So, you know, like I love analyzing things. So uh, typically what happened was like the rest of the class would like be in the back of the class, like smoozing and doing everything. And I would be with the teacher right? and I would analyze the poem. Now, when you have a dark and scary night, when you have a concept of it was a dark road or a tree without any leaves, what does that represent? Fear, right? It represents fear, it represents uncertainty. So now back to our verse. So there was darkness all over the world. Yeah, there was a physical darkness, could be. Right? There's an age-old question, was darkness created? Is darkness a lack of light? Is darkness a creation? Not for our discussion today. All right, but that's an interesting question, right? If God created everything, so he created darkness, right? Is there a creation of darkness or darkness a lack of light? Something to think about, but not for our discussion. But there was darkness all over. What it says there was darkness all over, Commentary says it's not referring to necessarily a physical darkness. God created in the world that there's uncertainty. God created in the world hardship. God created in the world things that are hard. And that's darkness. And then he said, by he are there should be light, meaning to say the ability to connect with other people, the ability to glow and to make uh, uh, an opportunity to get out of that darkness. Why is there darkness and then light? Why not light and then darkness? And again, if we're saying that darkness is not necessarily the lack of light, the absence of light, but darkness was created. To say the commentary is because the, 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 the way someone grows, and this is what we're going to talk about, the way someone grows, the way there is a, 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 a growth is through the hardships, getting out of the hardships. Not having a good and then having a hardship, but having hardship and getting out of the hardship, that's how someone grows. And, and say the comedy, that's the word boker. The word boker, what does the word boker mean? Anybody know? Morning, right? Boker tov, right? Boker tov, right? Uh, oh, God, we have Stav, our local Israeli here, right? Uh, right? Star Academy, Kibisado. Ere, Tzaraim Tovim. So Boker Tov means good morning. Hey, but Boker means morning. Right? Stav, isn't there a cereal uh, in Israel called Boker? Something like a book book, there's like a chicken on it. No? I think there's a cereal in Israel 
Hey, but boker means morning. Hey, boker means morning. What does the word boker mean? To say in the commentary that the brief, the Hebrew word of boker means to break out. Right? The concept of boker is the Hebrew word means to break through, opening. Right? So the, the idea of dawn, the idea of morning is that the light is breaking through the darkness. The light is breaking through the darkness and it's getting rid of the darkness. And it's very interesting, right? If everybody's anybody's been up, I'm sure you have, especially a couple of weeks ago, right? When sunrise or dawn, right? You see there's like a little sliver of light and there's more, and then the whole thing, because it's breaking through the darkness. Say the commentaries, that's what we all have to do. We have to create a breaking through the darkness. Now the question is, how do we do that? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But first and foremost, first and foremost, we have to understand. Number one, being in a situation of uncertainty, being in a situation of hardship, being in a situation of personal, uh, a, a personal situation or a global situation or a family situation or something else is normal. And a lot of times, and I've spoken to people, people think that it's abnormal. They think that there's something wrong with them. And first and foremost, people have to understand that it's a normal thing. It's part of the nature of how God created the world. First, there's darkness. First, there's darkness, and there is darkness in the world. There is uncertainty in the world. For, from, as, from as a little kid, we already have uncertainty. Our parents help us to grow out of it. Right? Can I do my homework? Can I not do my homework? Am I going to pass the test? Am I not going to pass the test? From growing up, there's already uncertainty, but there's light. And we have the ability to break out of that. And as we said, the only way to grow is only when you go from darkness and you break out of that darkness. So now, so now how do we do this? And, 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 and I want to quote a, a quote from, from Albert Einstein. It says like this. I have no specific talents. I'm only a pass, I'm passionately curious. We are only stuck if we don't care enough to look for a way out. As Luke asks in Star Wars, any Star Wars fans here? Actually, I'm not a Star Wars fan. For those that have been in my classes, what am I? I'm a Star Trek. Right, very good, thank you. Right, um, I happen to be a Star Trek fan. But Luke in Star Wars said, what's in the cave? And you know the answer. Only what you bring into it. What's inspiring in an ordinary day? Only the light that we take with us. Right, so first and foremost, what did Albert Einstein say? We are only stuck if we don't care enough to look the way out. So step number one, Step number one, to get out of uncertainty, right, and to get out of the darkness, is number one, willing, wanting to go out. And you'd say, well, no, duh, of course, everybody wants to go out. Uh-oh, -uh, that's why there's a lot of people that make a lot of money, right, and they, we call them psychologists, right, or other things like that, self-help people. There's a lot of people that are stuck. They don't think they could go out. They think everybody else's life is better. They think every situation, every other situations are better. They think that it would be much better if X, Y, and Z happen, but they can't deal with what's going on with them. So step number one to get out of the certainty, they, step number one of finding that light and to break through and to grow is realizing right, that you have the ability to break out of it. You have to find that way. And as, as, as Yoro said, what? What it's inspiring is um, only what, what you bring in is in the cave. We find this beautiful idea, and, and guys, this is something really, really important to think about. Rav Zusha was a Hasidic rabbi who lived in Europe. Right? A Hasidic rabbi that lived in Europe, who is known for his witty lines, his sharp lines, his inspirational quotes, and right? a very spiritual person. And he was asked one time, he says, when I go to heaven, right, when I go to heaven, they will not ask me why I was not Moshe. Right? When I go to heaven, they're not going to ask me why I wasn't like Abram Avinu, Abraham, our forefather. When I go to heaven, they're not going to ask me like I wasn't like Moshe Feinstein, the great Torah sage who only passed away in the 80s. They're not going to ask me why I wasn't even my father. They're not going to ask me why I wasn't X, Y, and Z. But when I go up to heaven, you know what they're going to ask me? They're going to ask me, why weren't you Zusha? They'll ask me, why were you not Zusha? And this is something that we all have to think about. So many times, 
we can't get out of ourselves. We can't even see the potentials that we have within ourselves because we're looking at what someone else has. We're looking at what a different situation, a different outcome. Uh, if, if I would have done X, Y, and Z, then I would have never been in this situation. Yes, that's true. If you're in this situation now, so what are you going to do about it? You have the within with all within you to overcome it, to get out of it, to find that light. But it's human nature, and that's part of the darkness. That you said darkness means to say you can't see what's in front of you. You can't see that you have the doors right in front of you. And if it's a dark room, the door could be right in front of you, but you could feel so claustrophobic. You could feel lost. You have no idea because you can't see that the door is just one step in front of you. You can walk right out. But it's dark. So when we're living in uncertain times, whatever that uncertainty is, we have to understand, number one, that we're going to be asked, why were you not do so? Why were you not Abi Feigenbeck? We all have to look inside of ourselves. We have the tools to overcome the challenges. We have the ability. We have to find those abilities. We have to say we're going to grab it on and we're going to do it. We're going to find a way out. That's step number one. Say the commentaries that that's really what Avram Avinu, Abraham, our forefather, Abraham, our forefather, last week's star portion where we started uh, really speaking about Abraham, Avram Avinu, last week's star portion. How does the Torah introduce Avram Avinu? So actually, the first time it introduces us is that he's traveling with his father, right? His father's taking him from one place to another. But Avram Avinu, in and of himself, what's the first thing that we find that God spoke to Avram Avinu? Lech lecha, go for yourself. And I spoke about this in the morning minute one last week. Lech lecha, go for yourself. Say the comments, what do you mean, lech lecha, go for yourself? Say the commentaries, go for yourself means to say that you have the within with all to find the right path. God did not tell him where to go. God said, where I will show you. Say the comments, why didn't God tell him where to go? Go to Israel, go to the land of Israel. Put it in your GPS, right? How to go. God didn't tell him because God was giving him the clues and the ability to find his own journey, to find his own path. If you are just given a game plan and told what to do, you're a robot. You're not a human being. So God said, I'm going to give you the abilities. I have you within you the strength to do it. Lech lecha, go for yourself. You have to get out of yourself. You have to look internally and realize that you have the strength, you have the ability to find your path, to find that light. It says of Zuso, when he read those words, he said, that's when I was inspired to say that, you know what, they're going to ask me up in heaven. Why wasn't I Rav Zusha? Not why wasn't I someone else? And God told Avram Avinu, Lech Lech He didn't say Lech uh, with, you know, GPS. Lech with Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Jax. He said, Lech Lech go for yourself. You have to find your path. So again, guys, that's step number one. Step number one really is realizing that we're all in, we all, it's, it's healthy and it's normal to be in an uncertain time. We don't like, we're not comfortable in it, we don't like it, but it's normal. Step number two is realizing that you have the ability and you have the strength to get out of it. It's within your power, not in someone else's power, but it's within your power to get out of that situation that you're in. Uh, I'll tell you an interesting story. When I was uh, dating, uh, actually, was dating my wife, Kavora, right? Um, so it's 15 years ago, actually. It's going to be our 15th wedding year anniversary in March. So uh, excited about that. Uh, but uh, about 15 years ago, when I was dating Kavora, so, you know, it was going well, thank God. And, uh, and I did have some questions. I wasn't sure. So I called my rabbi in Israel, Rabbi Elephant, right? my rabbi in Eretz Israel in Israel. I'm still close to him. And I, I called him up to have a talk with him. And, and uh, you know, we went back and forth with this. And I was like, no, he said, Avi, I'm not telling you who to marry. Right? I, don't, I could have a discussion with you. Right? I could talk over the point with you. But at the end of the day, it has to be your decision. At the end of the day, you have to look at all the variables. You have to look at all, everything and make that decision because you have it within you to make that decision. And that's on a side point, and I've talked about this in education, that's a good educator. 
A good educator is not telling you what to do. A good educator gives you the options and allows you to make a choice because at the end of the day, you have to be you. You might make mistakes and you might go the wrong path. And as an educator, you could say, listen, I don't think that's really the right path and explain why. But at the end of the day, a person has to make their own decisions. And that's what my rabbi told me. He said, Avi, I'm not telling you who to marry. And thank God I made the right decision. Right? Uh, but, but guys, that's what it means that it's within your power. It's within your power. You have to talk it over with someone. You have to have a discussion. There's ways of, 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 of figuring out the different paths. But you have to make sure you realize that you have the power within you. Now, the next thing is to realize, and this is a very powerful thing, Rev. Volba says that, and this is more general, and this is more for when there's dealing with other people. And I think it's a little more, this is a, something a little more apropos for what people are going through right now um, in the situation that we're in. Right? But Rev. Volba says like this, he said there's two types of worlds. We're on page two, the second source, if someone wants to look at it inside. It says Rev. Volba, there's two types of worlds. There's a world of connection, and there's a world of arguments. A world of arguments. A world of someone that's connecting, and there's a world that someone wants to argue. And says Revolba that the same way that you're not going to find palm trees in Antarctica, right? and you're not going to find, you know, uh, uh, you're not going to find a, a, an oak tree in the Amazon, right? You're not going to be able to find a person that gets along, right? An angry person in a world of connection and a happy person in a world of arguments. You're not going to find it. And Cesar Volba is very important and very powerful. Cesar Volba, that one has to think what kind of world he wants to be in. Again, this is back to what's in our power. One has to think about what kind of world do they want to be in? Do they want to be in a world of connection? A world of where they get along with people? A world where they're happy? A world where they know there's uncertainty and they know there's people that disagree? And we're going to talk about that in a minute. How can we live in that world? Or do they want to live in a world that there's constant fighting? In a world that there's constant disagreements? In a world where they're constantly, unfortunately, saying comments that are mean and vulgar? What kind of world do they want to live in? And that's something that's within our power. It's within our power to decide what kind of world we want to live in. And, and I'm going to say something that I've said in the past, and I'm going to say it again. As we said before, it's within our power. What does it mean it's within our power? It's within our power to decide what direction we want to go in. But we have to realize that it's within someone else's power to go in a different direction too. And the same way my rabbi didn't tell me who to marry, so too I cannot tell someone else what to do. I have to respect them for who they are and I could disagree with them. And you all know that I disagree with a lot of things. Just look at me. Okay. But I respect them for who they are. I'm happy to have a healthy dialogue, a healthy conversation. But I respect them for who they are. And the only way to live in a world of connection the only way to see that life and to get out of the uncertainty of one's life, the only way to make sure that they break through Boker, they break through the uncertainty, is by changing a mindset that's in the mind. Changing that mindset and said, I'm going to be a person who is not going to allow my beliefs, what I believe. Sorry about that. All right. Let's turn the vibrator. There you go. All right. What I believe into dictating what other people have to believe. And that says Revolva will be a happy person. That says Revolva is a person that will be able to connect with other people. You'll be able to have a couple that has different opinions about something. You'll be able to have a couple that argues but love each other. 
You could have a cup, you could have neighbors that have two different posters on their lawns, but have a barbecue every July 4th and have Thanksgiving together and do Friday night dinners together. Because if you understand, and if you believe that I cannot tell someone else what to do, I, I could employ on them, I could educate them, I could have a healthy dialogue, but I cannot tell someone else what to do. Then you are cutting through the darkness, getting out of the uncertainty and finding happiness and light. Because uncertainty is a byproduct of anger, of upsetness, and not seeing the future. And if you see a future by saying, that's how the world goes. We have different opinions. Same way one person likes, you know, uh, the Jaguars. I'm not sure why, but okay. I had to actually do well this year. Nothing against any of our Jaguar friends here, right? But uh, listen, it's not my fault. I grew up in Toronto. So, you know, I like the Maple Leafs and the Blue Jays who haven't done anything really since 2003, but okay. Uh, I mean, 1993, right? Um, not 2003, but 1993, right? But just say the same way we have two different people that have two diff like two different teams. And, or something even more cemented and something that's a little more important than sports. Yes, I know, there's things that are more important than sports. Same way you have two people that have different philosophies and in their Judaism. And each one thinks that this is the right way of doing it. And they have healthy discussions or for them to be able to coexist, they don't have a discussion about it. So too, People could coexist with having different other opinions. And my friends, that is what they're all the same. Doesn't mean to say that you have to admit, doesn't mean to say you have to think that they're right, but you have to respect them for having that opinion. And that is really the ultimate thing of Hillel and Shammai. Hillel and Shammai, the great sages of the Talmud, who had many, many disagreements. They argued on a lot of things. But the Talmud goes out of the way to tell us who their daughters and sons marry. The Talmud is not, is not a storybook. Right? The Talmud is not a history book. The Talmud, whatever is written in the Talmud, is part of the oral Torah. Part of our Torah. So the Talmud decides to tell us who Hillel and Shai's children married. There's a reason behind it. Because you know who they married? Hillel and Shai's children married each other. They didn't allow their disagreements to influence their friendship and their relationship. And that, my friend, is what Revol is saying over here. To get out of the darkness, to be able to start seeing the light, we have to be able to accept other people or their opinion. Now, I just want to point out two more points and then we'll end with this. And these two points are ways of being able to tell yourself and to be stronger of getting out of that darkness and being able to accept other people. Inner confidence. Inner confidence is a very important thing. Having, the, having a highly developed sense of who they are allows the highly uh, persistent people to be able to think on their, on their own, to understand other people, right? to be able to be confident with their opinion. Because if you have an un, if you have, when you have a, someone that doesn't have confidence, they think everybody's attacking them. And they take everything personal. When you have a confidence and healthy person, right, you know what you believe, and you don't need someone else to believe what you believe for you to be able to believe what you believe. While the inner confidence gets challenges, is able to shake those challenges off. He never gets destroyed, right, or, or, or away from his determination by other people. So number one is we have to work on our inner confidence. We have to be able to work and say that I am healthy, I know what I believe, and I'm not gonna allow what I believe, or better, what I don't believe, to shake my inner peace and my inner connection. So many, people spend so much time, it's mind boggling, people spend so much time and energy debating and thinking about what other people believe and allow it to control their lives or what other people believe. Work on what you believe. Come stronger what you believe. 
And confident people also, and it's not written in here, but confident people also allow themselves to hear other people's opinions. Because if you're not confident in what you believe, you're going to be scared to hear other people's opinions. Because it might shake what you believe. If you truly believe in what you believe, I have, I have said this a hundred times, I have no problem. I'm happy to, to have a healthy conversation with anybody about any topic of Judaism. I won't talk to them about astrology, right? Or even mathematics. I like math, right? Or science. I know a bunch of science, but I won't talk to them about that because I'm not confident with my abilities to be able to have that discussion. But I'm confident and healthy to understand that I would have any topic about anything about Judaism. And I've said this many times, and some people have taken me up on it. And if there's a question that's a good question, say, oh, that's a great question. Let me call up my rabbi and I'll talk to him. Because not only, I don't, I'm not egotistic. I don't think I know all the answers. But I believe in what I believe that there is an answer. And there's someone out there that knows and I will find that answer. So therefore, I have no problems having a debate or a discussion. I hate the word debate. But a discussion with other people about what I believe. If you have that inner confidence within yourself. And the other thing is the ability to adjust and to adapt, right? The ability to help the people have the ability to adjust and to adapt their action plan. They do not stubbornly persist in the face of evidence that their plan is not working, but look for a better way that will increase their chance of success. And I'm gonna to skip to the other highlighted part. They're not, tied, they're not tied into their ego and are, not quickly, and are quickly willing to admit when something is not working. Again, back to a healthy person. But part of this thing is being able to admit when something's not working. Being able to not be tied down to a certain narrative, to a certain thing, realizes need to be changed. I was watching, um, I was watching something the other day, and um, someone said, it was, I thought the line was cute. It was, uh, it was like a mock, uh, it was a mock uh, election. And uh, one, of the, one, one of the people that was being a candidate said like this, said, I think everything has good and bad. So what I'm trying to do is taking the good of both and starting a new party, starting a new thing. But that's the thing, having being able to adapt. Now, I'm not saying that has to happen, right? And please don't quote me out there, right? But what I'm saying is that everything has good and bad. A healthy person has the ability to adapt and to change. And a healthy person realizes that if they really want to be true to themselves, they truly want to be a healthy person. They truly want to grow. Like so many people want to see that light. As we said, by he are, God created light, as some of you said. Light doesn't mean necessarily a physical light, but a spiritual light, an internal light. You want to find that internal light. You want to find that spiritual light. You want to find happiness in your life. You have to be willing to look hard at yourself and say, what kind of person am I? Am I someone that's living in a world of connection? Am I someone that's living in a world where I, self I have confidence in what I believe, but the confidence is not egotistic? It's a confidence that I'm willing to have a debate or discussion and realize that if there's some, some flaw in what I believe, I'm willing to change because I want to grow. I want to change. Or am I someone that's living in a world of uncertainty, a world where I'm not willing to see someone else's opinion, a world where I'm so busy thinking about what someone else is thinking and how bad it is when I'm even reflecting what I believe and constantly saying things about the other person and not reflecting internally what I should look and how I should reflect. And someone that doesn't even have any inkling in their mind that they have to change. They think they're perfect. Because as Winston Churchill said, success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss. That's success. Success is realizing I'm not perfect. Realizing that I'm not perfect. And that takes us back to the beginning of the class. Why did God create darkness first and then light? Because darkness represents our failures. Darkness represents our hardships. 
darkness represents that we have difficulties in life. And God said, I hear you are, but I created light. I created the ability to go out of that. But it's going to take time. Lech lech Abram, go for yourself. You have to realize you have the power within you. You have the strength within you. But you have to work on it. You have to look internally and say, how am I going to find my path? God didn't tell him where it is. He had to work on it. He had to find it. He had to grow. And growing and changing and having that healthy confidence is living in a world of connection. And when you find that light, and it's not all or nothing, and we said so many times, when you find that light, then you are starting to get out of the uncertainties in your life. And you will be a happy person. You will be a person that's content, a person that knows that they have faults, a person that knows that they're not perfect, but a person that's growing to try to change that because you can't ask for anything more. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, again, thank you to JCA and a big thank you to David Robbins uh, for sponsoring this. I'm going to stop the recording if there's any questions.